The movie begins in 1938 by showing us Professor Dominic, an elderly man who's been in love with a girl that he'd met at the university. On his way to university, Dominic is struck by lightning and burns up. At the hospital, Dominic is bandaged up and being taken care of by the doctors, and the doctor who was treating him try to figure out his age and name by having him squeeze their hand, waiting for the right number and letter to come up. He seems to be in agony, and his teeth start falling out of his mouth. The doctor informs him that the lightning should have killed him, or he should have died from asphyxiation. At best, most people who've been hit by lightning usually end up mute or blind, but he was lucky enough to have escaped with minimum damage. His teeth start to regenerate, which really surprises his doctors, who want to discover more about his new condition. Dominic has a flashback of his past when his young love broke their engagement because she felt like he wasn't hers and he was living in a different time. Dominic then sits on a park bench watching her run away. At the hospital where Dominic was receiving treatment, he tells his doctor that despite his youthful appearance, he's actually 72 years old and works as a school professor. And the doctor obviously finds it difficult to believe Dominic's claim about his age and profession. They discuss the predicament of Dominic having an invalid identity due to his youthful appearance. Once Dominic starts feeling better, he decides to shave off his beard and prepares to leave the hospital. As he does so, he catches the attention of a professor named Stekulescu. Intrigued by Dominic's transformation, Professor Stekulescu invites him to his house to closely examine him. During their interaction, Dominic realizes that the accident not only made him look younger, but also enhanced his memory. As Dr. Stekulescu speaks to Dominic about his past, he finds out that his lover had chosen to marry someone else and had died a year later due to childbirth. Dominic is forced to undergo several public visits with doctors as they're all fascinated with his condition. We then see Dominic having an erotic dream about a woman who was staying in room 6 but could not be sure if he actually experienced it or if it was actually just a dream. His doctor informs him that he needs to be sure and that the woman was imposed upon them by the secret service. That night, he walks out of his room to find the woman in room 6 smoking outside and he asks if they knew each other and she tells him that they do. He explains that they've met many times but the recent one was the night before where they met in room 6. After going to his room, Dominic has another vivid dream about the woman in room 6 and he's confused whether his dreams are real or not. After realizing his newfound ability to learn and master different languages, Dominic wakes up the next morning to discover that his partner has mysteriously disappeared from Dr. Stekulescu's house. Stekulescu informs Dominic that she'd recorded their conversation and reported him to the police upon discovering his seamless language skills. Dominic's extraordinary ability to learn and speak multiple languages had made him an incredibly valuable and sought after individual in the world. The situation takes a sudden turn when the professor is urgently called to his office. Upon arrival, he finds police officers rummaging through the files on Dominic, and despite the chaos, the professor adamantly refuses to surrender his patient, arguing that Dominic is too unwell to be moved. The complexity of the situation deepens as the police begin to see Dominic as a person of interest due to his exceptional language skills. The recordings made by his partner only have fueled their curiosity further, and Dominic finds himself entangled in a complex web of intrigue and scrutiny with his remarkable talent making him the center of an intense attention. As the investigation unfolds, Dominic must navigate the challenges that come with his unique abilities, and he is faced with the task of proving his innocence and protecting his identity from those who see him as a valuable specimen to be studied or exploited. Dominic gets the attention of the sadistic Dr. Joseph, who believes a person who's electrocuted with a million volts could develop abilities. His research captured the interest of Adolf Hitler, who was now also interested in Dominic. Stekulescu is required to lend Dominic to the doctor so they can do more experiments. In 1941, Dominic flees the hospital and makes his own dictation about his life. He's a fugitive in neutral Switzerland encircled by the Axis powers. And he'd lost contact with the professor which only meant that he was dead. And Dominic was living in fear, avoiding capture by his wits. On November 30, 1941, Dominic had fled to Zurich where he had learned a way to keep himself alive. Living like a secret agent, he had learned the skill to forge documents, change addresses, and prepare disguises. In 1942, Dominic comes to term with his mutantism after he discovered powers that he doesn't understand. He kept working on his book, documenting the origin of language and human consciousness, and he realizes that now he has the power to simply know the context of any book instantly by just looking at it. A few months later, Dominic's money started to run out, and he came up with a plan to make some extra cash without attracting too much attention. He decided to play blackjack, a card game, but only enough to earn money without raising suspicion. While 
While playing one of his games, Dominic was approached by Ted, a journalist from a magazine who had kept track of Dominic's life for a long time. Ted explains that he was on a special assignment from the US and explains that he would be able to protect Dominic by hiding his identity. Dominic then tells the man that he prefers to stay neutral and leaves. After starting work as a professor, Dominic was scared of giving himself away as he knew more than any of the other teachers. At a private party, Dominic is approached by a woman who tells him that she knows that he's a good friend of Professor Stekuletsku. Explaining his disinterest, Dominic walks away but is trapped by another man, Joseph, who has information on him. Dominic attempts to escape but Joseph manages to catch up to him and Joseph then reveals to Dominic that he's a remarkable individual who is a true miracle. Just as they were having this conversation, the woman from the party catches up to them and warns Dominic not to trust Joseph, revealing that Joseph was a prominent scientist for Hitler. In a shocking turn of events, Joseph explains to Dominic that only superhumans have a chance of surviving the imminent nuclear war. Fueled by anger toward the woman, Joseph shoots her, leaving Dominic stunned by the sudden violence. Using his telekinetic abilities, Dominic makes Joseph use the gun on himself and after the incident, Dominic decides to stop making notes in English and instead uses a language of his own invention. Years later, Dominic runs into two women driving up a mountain in the Alps and one of the women introduces herself as Veronica before driving away. A few hours later, Dominic goes to the police to report an incident, feeling like something would happen to Veronica and her friend in the heavy rain. He and the police search the road and find Veronica's car by the side of the road with her friend passed out on the ground. He finds Veronica in a hole inside the woods and gets her out and she seems to have suffered head trauma and developed amnesia after the crash. Upon further investigation, Dominic realizes that Veronica, due to her accident, now thinks that she's a person living in India 14 centuries ago. And she believes that she spent several months in a cave meditating. She was standing there when she saw lightning strike from above her which caused many rocks to be dislodged, getting her out of the cave. Dominic explains to the scientists that were taking care of her that it might be necessary to call the researchers from Rome to confirm her story. And the researchers speak to the young lady and confirm that her knowledge of her teacher, the famous enlightened philosopher the Buddha, was true. Professor Giuseppe decides to take the girl to India to find out more about what happened and invites Dominic to come with him hoping that Veronica's past self would help them with their expedition. As per Veronica's story, the group find the cave that she said that she was meditating in and a local monk recognizes Veronica and got guides them to the cave that she was speaking about. Once they get there, Veronica passes out and the group enter the cave and find an ancient scripture along with a bunch of old books. After returning to the city, Dominic goes to check on Veronica who has returned to being herself once again. Veronica is questioned by Giuseppe about the station from the last couple of days and it's discovered that in a previous life, she'd been a woman called Rupin and had been able to access that life through transmigration of the soul. Dominic speaks to Veronica about her condition and she has a hard time believing that she had lived a different life a long time ago and she believes that she might have been possessed by an evil spirit. Veronica becomes incredibly famous enough to have reporters chasing after her to question her and as he was helping her escape one of these reporters, Veronica kisses Dominic. He suggests that they should get away, just the two of them for a vacation, which makes her very happy. And excited, they continue kissing in the car. The couple leave for Malta, where they get eagerly greeted by their house staff, and the two eventually elope and start living together. One night, as the couple sleep in bed, Dominic whispers to Veronica that he's always loved her, and she immediately wakes up, having regressed back to her past life again. Dominic records her speaking a strange language, which he realizes was ancient Egyptian. She then starts moving around as if she was possessed by a demon, until he holds her and calms her down. The next morning, Dominic and his wife listen to her recording as she explains her situation. He tells her that her condition might be able to help him complete his life's work, which is to figure out the origin of language. He then tells her that he was actually 88 years old, but only looks young because of his condition. That night, the couple go out for dinner and relax and enjoy each other's company, and Veronica tells her husband that she feels tired all the time but doesn't know why. Dominic realizes that his wife's back and forth state accessing her past must have started to exhaust her her, and although Dominic was worried, he tries not to get stressed about it. The next morning at dawn, Dominic awakens and is startled when he sees his wife on the edge of the sea. He hurries to her and when he gets there, she tells him that she experienced another personality and he tells her that the first woman that she was before knew a lot more than they could ever understand. Dominic finds a way to control her transition by telling her that he'd always loved her as she was in a hyper-suggestible state. Veronica then starts speaking in Babylonian and starts to descend even deeper into her past. Every 
night for two weeks, Veronica went back and forth into her past, and she goes through unknown languages, unwritten history, getting closer to the inarticulate moment of the beginning. The more he pushes, he realizes that Veronica was getting sicker and aging rapidly, and this is confirmed when a doctor informs him that she was going through menopause even though she was only 25. Gradually, Veronica begins to show her age on her face and is devastated by the changes. And even though through one more regression she could give him the answer that he needed, he was too scared that her condition might worsen. A few days later, Dominic watches his wife as her hair turns grey and her condition deteriorates even further. He understands that living with her was making her sick and he decides to leave despite her begging him to stay. And he was sure that once he leaves, she will go back to her youthful state. He promises that he will come back if her youth doesn't return. Veronica begs him to stay, but he's already made up his mind and Veronica has a hard time letting go of her husband but knows that she can't change his mind. And Dominic slowly disappears into the shadow, leaving her forever. After breaking off his marriage with Veronica, Dominic returns to Romania to live out his days. He stays at an old hotel where the receptionist mentions his name as a famous professor. In his room, Dominic is heartbroken because he was forced to leave his wife and start anew. And again back in his room, Dominic has an argument with his alter ego who tells him that atomic wars are unavoidable and a new man would emerge. Dominic was upset because he doesn't believe in the extinction of the species just to make a new man. He wants to know if he can save Veronica all the pain that she would go through trying to keep up or follow him. His alter ego keeps antagonizing him, talking in a language that Dominic doesn't understand. The thought of all those people dying in hopes of humanity evolving made Dominic very angry. But then Dominic manages to break free from his alter ego when he shatters the mirror. As soon as he shattered his mirror, his alter ego vanished, and Dominic looks at old photo albums reminiscing about the life that he lived. He goes back to the bar and sits down and notices the final years catching up to him. He then sees himself age in the mirror and finally accepts his fate. And the movie ends as we see Dominic and he's died and fallen over the stairs located on the road, and he was still hearing his wife's voice clinging on to her words until his last word. A single flower is seen on his hand as he had plucked it to give Veronica, and in his head, he asks her where she wants him to put the rose as the camera focuses on the flower in his hand. And that is where the movie comes to an end.